Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Let's now tell you what happened today in history, the 2nd of April 2005. Now, on this day in history, the Pope winner as, the, as history's most well-traveled Pope and the first non-Italian to hold the position of the Pope actually passed away today in history on April 2nd, 2005. Well, John Paul II was his name. And uh, he was born in Poland in 1920. And six days after his death, about two million people gathered in the Vatican City for his funeral. It was said to be the biggest funeral in history. Uh, Pope John II uh, was the head of the Catholic Church and the sovereign of the Vatican City State from 1978 until he died in 2005. Pope John II was elected Pope by the Second Papal Conclave of 1978, which was called after John Paul I, who had been elected in August to uh, you know, succeed uh, Pope John Paul VI after he died 33, uh, died after 33 days. Now, like I earlier mentioned, Pope, uh, John, John, Pope John Paul II was the most traveled world leaders in history. He visited 129 countries and he was also the second longest serving pope in modern history. He had been you know, hospitalized in February 2005 uh, from, with complications from the flu. But now he's, he's remembered you know, for his efforts to end communism, building bridges of people of the faith, preaching peace and unity. And it was also the first ever Slavic pope and the youngest to be chosen in 132 years. And that's how you celebrate people who really made a mark in history. Um, pope John Paul is you know, arguably the most popular, um, you know, head of uh, uh, the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. you know, and um, mostly also because of the time that he spent there and, um, you know, his, his work, basically. Yeah. Um, these days, there is a little bit more criticism, you know, for people even as high as the Pope. Um, I remember the current Pope, you know, was criticized because he pushed someone's hand away uh, when she was, you know, being too forceful, pulling him, you know, he had to smack her hand away and there was criticism all over the world and he had to apologize, you know, because of the world that we currently live in, where those things are now seen as, you know, excessive. Um, uh, but Pope, Pope John Paul, you know, maybe also because of the era that we lived in, you know, spent the most time and became, you know, the most popular, also survived assassination attempts, I believe, um, in the time that he was there. Um, he's, you know, a pope that I believe that a lot of people, you know, absolutely miss uh, because of who he was, you know, to the world and, you know, his message and his, um, his body language, basically, and the way that he carried out his role as a head of the Catholic Church. Um, yes, really. When people talk about him, you know, when it comes to international history, they can't easily forget his efforts when it comes to interfaith reconciliation, trying to bring, you know, Judaism followers or believers of Judaism and Islam together yeah. and believing in, you know, world peace. Let's all get along. We can get along. And that's what, you know, religious leaders today should try to emulate, not you preaching hate for someone else because they believe something different from you. We are all one or belong to one race, and that's the human race. And that's Absolutely. what preachers and religious leaders should be preaching to people. All right, from someone that, you know, world leaders, like you said, and uh, people across the world should emulate, we'll move into somebody who maybe not so many people should emulate, and that uh, is... <laughs> not maybe, many people should not <laughs> emulate this. Uh, 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 you know, crime lord. Uh, he's a very, very popular name, John Gotti. Uh, if you remember, there's also a movie that was uh, done by John Travolta um, called, um, I think it was called John Gotti, I think, or so. And there's another, actually, series called uh, Gotti. Um, you know, and I'm not sure why they keep making movies of, you know, crime bosses people and people celebrate who... celebrate criminals. Yes. It's weird. Yes, absolutely. But anyway, on this day in 1992, John Gotti was sentenced, uh, was found guilty, rather, of the murder of five men. Uh, Paul Castellano, who was also a crime, a crime uh, lord, uh, Thomas Bilotti, Robert D. Bernardo, Libori Milito, and Luis Daibono. If you remember also the names, if you watch a lot of crime movies and a lot of drug you know, uh, movies, you must hear those names. Uh, Carlo Gambino, uh, who was you know, part, I think, head of the Gambino crime family back then. 
Um, on this day, after 14 hours of deliberation, the uh, jury found Gotti guilty on all charges of uh, the indictment. He was incarcerated at the United States Penitentiary in Illinois and spent the majority of his sentence in effective solitary consignment, allowed out of his cell for only one hour a day. Uh, Joseph, his full name, John Joseph Gotti, was an American gangster and boss of the Gambino crime family in New York City. He ordered and helped um, uh, to orchestrate the murder of the Gambino boss, Paul Castellano, in December 1985. His, him and his brothers grew up in poverty and turned into a life of crime at a very early age. They basically were into all sorts of crime, uh, including drugs and murder and kidnapping and whatever else that you can describe. He was widely known because of his outspoken personality and flamboyant lifestyle, which gained him favor from some of the you know, general public. He reportedly earned between five to 20 million per year during his tenure as the Gambino boss. Um, on this day, 1992, he was convicted of five murders, conspiracy to commit murder, racketeering, obstruction of justice, tax evasion, illegal gambling, extor extortion, and loan shacking, and uh, was sentenced to life imprisonment without parole um, in uh, Illinois back then. Uh, since his conviction, he has been portrayed in five TV movies, a documentary series, and two theatrical films. Hmm. Um, so yes, like you said, people celebrate Criminals. Criminals, you know, once in a while. If you remember also Bobby, Bobby, <laughs> I think it was Bobby Schmurder, who just got released, you know, from, or granted bail, or released from jail, um, you know, but came out and, you know, every, you know the, a lot of the black American community treated him like a celebrity, like uh, he had not committed any crimes and completely ignoring the reason he was sent to jail in the first place. Even in and Nigeria. So, yeah. Oh, yeah oh, yes, even here in Nigeria. Oh. And so, um, you know, John Gotti also is one of those type of people that, um, a lot of uh, people wanted to be like, you know, completely ignoring, you know, how he made his money and what made him popular in the first place. He wasn't a pastor, uh, wasn't a banker or anything. He was a criminal, you know, and was head of, you know, one of the biggest uh, drug and crime gangs in, in the United States in the early, late 80s, early mm -hmm. 90s. Um, and, um, you, you know, they, they basically were um, untouchable, you know, to a certain extent. There was bribery, there was corruption, there was, you know, the drug business, there was mm -hmm. so much of it that was going on at the same time, you know, that made it hard for them to be touched. You know, and, and it also took a lot of work from the FBI and the United States criminal justice system to be able to, you know, plant, you know, rather gather enough evidence on these people before they were killed. Um, if you remember The Last Dawn, uh, The Godfather, you know, some of all those movies mm -hmm. maybe have, you know, made, you know, you know, crime a little bit romantic, um, but it's really not the same. Wow. Yeah. One, one thing that intrigued me about his story was how he basically formed his own criminal gang, street gang as a child. Do you know the amount of courage and ruthlessness that would take to form your own gang and gather all the boys, be able to command respect and all that, and you know, basically lead them to commit crime? By the time he was 21, he had been arrested five times for stealing cars, for you know, fighting and all of that. You know, he, he amassed so much wealth. His net worth was about $30 million. Amassed so much wealth involved in you know, violent crimes, killed people. But I believe he got what he deserved. Well, yes, yeah. I guess. I guess so. You know, and, um, you know, we, we, you know, they're great stories to tell, to be honest. You know, let's not, you know, you know criminal or, you know, make him look like, you know, complete devil. Oh, uh, he wasn't? Also was, it, was it an angel? Oh, wow. Tell me about <laughs> they're that. They're also interesting stories. Tell you know, me. That, you know, that, you know, and that's why he's, you know, gotten five movies and documentaries and, and theatricals and all of that um, because of, you know, the life that How he lived. You know, he so was, as right? much as as much as they're crime bosses, there's also a part where they're also a philanthropist, you know, and give back to the don't, community. Don't do that. <laughs> you know, when, when they do things like this, they're trying to make themselves feel good. Like, okay, I'm not so bad after all. After all. Really. All right, so, stay yes, with us. Today uh, in history. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for now. We'll take a break here and return with our first big story. We're talking about Nin. Yes, we are. Do you have your Nin? You might just be going to jail for about 14 years if you don't. So let's give you details about that after the break.